Hello, this is Dr. Christy Lukes. We are continuing our study of Heisler charts being used for mass transfer, and we're going to be looking at an example problem in this lesson. Now, just as a reminder, there's this table in your book that you'll want to refer to that's our translator's guide from heat transfer to mass transfer. And so be sure that you refer back to this regularly. We're going to be doing this to solve uh, this problem here that states that one method for decaffeinating whole coffee beans is to contact them with an organic solvent into which the caffeine is leached. In a well agitated solvent, Kc goes to infinity, and so the primary resistance to transfer is going to be diffusion of caffeine within the bean. If we assume that the, sphere, the bean is a sphere of diameter 0.6 centimeters and the diffusivity is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10th meters squared per second, we want to estimate the time required to reduce the caffeine at the center of the bean to 3% of its initial value. And so we are going to treat this at the center. Now, the information given in the problem seems pretty darn limited, but they tell us that the diameter is 0 0.6 centimeters, and I need to convert that to a radius, so 0 0.3 centimeters, or in terms of meters, move the decimal, and we end up with this. And they tell us the diffusivity, and we will assume that that is at the proper temperature and pressure. And we want to find the time required to get the caffeine content to 3% of its initial value. Now, if you recall looking at those Heisler charts, they are in terms of concentration or temperature ratios. I'm going to assume that K equals to 1. They didn't tell me any differently, so I think that's about as well as we'll be able to do. And the formulas for chart 1 are going to talk about the temperature or concentration at the center minus the temperature or concentration of the surroundings over the initial value minus the surroundings. And we're going to assume that because it's well agitated, we're keeping it moving so the concentration of the surroundings will always be approximately zero. And we want to find when it's 3% of the initial value, so therefore this entire expression we're looking for 3%, 0 0.03, and we want to find the time related to this. So let's look at our Heisler chart. So in this particular case, we have information that we can use for all of this. We'll be looking for this. We know information about this. This is going to be our C naught minus C infinity over C initial minus C infinity. And so this is going to be 0 0.03, which is right here. So it's this line. I know I'm going to be looking for this value. The other thing that I need to use to be able to read this graph is I need to be able to use this. Now, K over HR, according to our translator's guide, is the diffusivity over KCR. I have the diffusivity, and I know that Kc is approaching infinity. So this value here is going to be approaching zero, which means I'm talking about this line right along here. So I find where these two pieces of information I know intersect. 
and then read straight down to find this value of the Fourier number. This value that I read here, uh, I estimate it looks like it's about 0 0.38. Maybe I don't know. What do you think it is? You can use your own numbers. Be sure you are trying this on your own. And if I use the 0 0.38, this is going to be equal to this alpha t over r squared, but our translator's guide says that this is the diffusivity times t over r squared. We're going to set this equal to 0 0.38, and therefore I can solve for t. Oh, that's not very easy to read. T is going to equal 0 0.38 times r squared over the diffusivity. I'm using r equal to 0 0.003 meters. I'm using diffusivity of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10th meter squared per second. And I end up with a time of 19,000 seconds. Or if I put this into something that's on a scale that I know what it means, uh, that's about five and a quarter hours. So it would as my estimate is that it would take about five hours in order to get down to only three percent caffeine. So this is an example of using the Heisler charts. You, again, can then also take this answer and use it with the second chart to figure out what the caffeine concentration would be at some point outside of the center, if you wish to. I'm going to leave it here try this. You do have some homework problems that you can be working on. I do recommend that you should be able to, at this stage, work the first three homework problems. Okay? Begin looking at that. Don't forget that I also have sample problems worked in the Canvas site. So you should have ample opportunities to kind of try this. Until you do these problems independently, you don't know how to do them. So just watching me do it is not really going to be as helpful as you trying it alongside. Thank you very much for your time.